everyone, it's James from the Fit RV, and we're here at the Outdoor Retailer Show 2016. I've got Chris Beanert from Winnebago, and we are here to talk about this thing behind me, the Concept Adventure Vehicle. Now, Chris, this is very different from some of the stuff I've seen from Winnebago in the past, including our own Travato. What do you got going on here? All right, well, we've been coming to the Outdoor Retailer Show for three years now. Okay. And we've been listening to uh, you know, the folks in this market, and they are very different from our traditional RV customers, our traditional B-Van buyers. Okay. And we've been listening, paying attention, and this year we've taken the opportunity to put together a coach for this, for these people, for this market, these outdoor adventurers that is very different and it's been wonderful because it's been giving us the opportunity to try some new experimental things that are just very different. Okay, well, one of the things I noticed right away that's different is this guy rides pretty high, right? It does. So what's the chassis? Okay, this was put together on the uh, Mercedes Sprinter uh, okay. 2500 chassis with the short. One, it's a short. It's the 144 inch wheelbase, and we've got we built with the single rear wheels and four wheel drive system, uh, which Mercedes puts out. And it's we did that because you know these people in these outdoor markets are not staying. Um, they're not staying on the pavement. Right. They're and they're not just going a little off the pavement. They're going many miles down forest roads into the deserts, and we wanted to give them the chassis that they needed. All right. And there's a whole bunch of other different stuff on this coach. So what do you say we get to take a look at it? Sounds great. Let's do it. All right, Chris. So you already mentioned about the the chassis. So this this Sprinter has the same engine that you put in much larger coaches, right? Right. This is the same uh, three liter V6 that we're putting in you know, our views and Navions. Oh, okay. So, it's a much bigger rig. Right. So the coach is going to have a lot of power for climbing mountains and Any hills. place you want to go. Absolutely. It'll get you there. Okay. So enough about the chassis. So tell me about the heat, hot water, that sort of thing. How are we getting that in this coach? Cause I know we're roughing it, but we want to be comfortable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The the heat and the hot water are going to come from the same Truma Combi uh, heating unit that you have in your Travato. Okay. And we love that thing. Right. And the very quiet, very efficient. So, you know, that's what we're using the... And so it uses propane, except, but when you're when you're plugged in somewhere, if you happen to be, you can heat. You can heat the coach all on electric. Okay, awesome. Um, let's see. So what about uh, things like uh, electronic gadgets? I know we got some uh, RAM mounts that are mounted up here. How do we charge all those? Okay. So what we did is under each overhead, uh, we included a RAM mount uh, where you can you can mount uh, an iPad, iPhone with the different X grips uh, that they have. And then under each uh, overhead, we also have a USB port, a dual port, to charge that, you know, to keep that device powered. You know, and this is a little experiment we're trying is, and because as people in this uh, market, they don't want a TV. No, they're not sitting around watching TV. You don't go up to the mountains to watch TV. No, so we're providing, you know, for their iPads and their tablets. Nice. Now, those 12 volt outlets, they're going to work off the, the house battery, right? Absolutely. You don't have Absolutely. to be running or plugged in to use that. That's right. And these RAM mounts, we've seen them actually here at the Outdoor Retailer Show. They have mounts for darn near anything you can think of. Right. Okay, cool. Um, so next, uh, the dinette. What have we got here? Does that make a second bed? Is it a little table? How does that work? Yeah. Okay. So our dinette, what we're doing is we're setting this up. We're really kind of exploring the limits of how small we can make a dinette since we're in such a you know a short van mm -hmm. and we've got our pull-up table we can pull up and then the flips over to be double size so you can see here it's still big enough for the people who want to work on the road with their laptops okay and okay good or have you know or for dining okay okay now for sleeping up here you know we've got the little triangles here that we can flip out mm-hmm and then our galley extension, we can flip that up, pull this D-ring here, mm -hmm. flip it down, and then with the seat back cushion that has a hard back, you can see we get some cross coach sleeping. Because, and now the seats in the Sprinter, they both, uh, they both rotate, right? So that, they become part of the dining area? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and so this is a second bed. Is there a, the, the first bed is in the back, right? It is. And so let's go talk about that. All right. All right, so Chris, here we are in the bed, and this looks like something I would have designed. Let's, let's what do you got here? All right, let's start with the beginning. Mm -hmm. Two bicycles, two mountain bikes yes. inside the coach. Yes, okay. thank you, thank you. Uh, right. I take full credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so we, we started with, uh, like I said, the envelope of two bicycles. Mm -hmm. And you see we've got the bed here in its raised position, mm -hmm. kind of high up, mm -hmm. which you're probably familiar with. Oh, yeah. 
Now, with the bed, with the bicycles out, we have each corner of the bed is adjustable. Whoa, so, wait, 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 each corner? But, yeah. So if the coach is not level, you could just... Level the bed. Ah, and if you're way off road, it's more likely that you're gonna be off level anyway. Correct. All right, Absolutely. I like it, I like it. Yeah, so what we, for sleeping with, normally a sprinter's not wide enough uh, really to sleep right. cross coach for an adult. Right. So we've added some what, window flares on the sides of the coach that widen the van out in the bed area. That just goes like how many inches on each side? About four inches on either side. Okay, and looking at it from the outside, to me, it didn't look that obnoxious. It didn't look like a bubble van or anything. No. So no. it was it was pretty pretty smooth that way. Um, let's see, anything else? Uh, the Froley sleep system I see you've got on the bed. Absolutely. That's like the second gen or something, right? Yeah, this is kind of a second gen Froley sleep system. It has all the same benefits um, of the Froley sleep system you're uh, used to. Add some cushioning, you know, forms to you know the shape of your body while you're sleeping, but still lets the air flow underneath the mattress between you know between the mattress and the bedboard. Okay, cool. And so one other thing I'm noticing back here in the uh, it's kind of like a garage, right? I mean, where the it bikes is. are. What? Tell me about the flooring. What? What is this stuff? Okay, the flooring is uh, materials typically used for pontoon boats. Okay. Well, and if you feel it, it's got a uh, little bit of a neoprene backer, mm -hmm. some nice cushioning. It's friendly for bare feet, and it's really easy to clean, very durable. Again, outdoor market, people are coming in, you know, from climbing mountains. They're muddy. They're dirty. We needed a flooring that was up to up to the standards. It's going to hold up. Right. And if you got cargo tie downs in here, is that what I'm seeing? You bet. Where well, there's two car tar two cargo tie downs on either side. So. If you don't have some way to mount your bikes, or if you don't even have bikes, if you've got, say, packs, if you've got dog kennels, whatever right. you got, there's a way to secure it in the bag. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, anything else about the bed, or should we uh, wander on up to the galley? Well, it's 54 inches wide at the at the head there, so it's sleeping wide enough for two people. How long? How long? You're going to be right about uh, 77 inches. 71. That's, that's long. That's more than sufficiently long. All right, cool. All right, thanks. Let's head up to the galley. All right, Chris, we're here in the galley, and right away, I recognize the sink, but, and, and this is a standard Dometic with a flip-up faucet, stores away neatly, but over here, this is definitely something I'm interested in now, especially since I've done some work on our coach. You've got an induction cooktop. We do, we do. So what's the thinking behind that, and how are you gonna run it? Okay, well the thinking and the logic behind it is to minimize the propane usage in the in the coach. So you can stay out longer. Abs right, right, okay. so you stay out longer. Now induction cooktop is a very energy hungry device. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna have a lithium ion battery okay. and a powerful inverter around the order of 2000 watts. Okay, that'd be enough. That's gonna be able to power that induction cooktop. Wow, yeah. and the other great thing about induction is there's no open flame, right? If you're out in the middle of the woods or something, there's no, you're not, uh, correct. There's there's no open flame. You use uh, like a cast iron uh, skillet or pots, something magnetic. Yep. And it's just a very clean, safe uh, appliance. Cool. All right. So I've noticed just you, you've got a couple other like flip ups and pull outs and, and all that sort of thing. What what all have you got in here? Yeah. Okay. So of course we've got our flip up extension for the galley. Right. And that becomes part of the second bed eventually. Right. Right. But and even when it's down. You can see it be forms like a serving surface here uh, for, for eating outside. For eating outside, I'm saying that you know I'm the cook in the family. You know that's what I'd be using it for. Okay. Okay. Now, to further expand the space for you know setting things, you know when you're cooking and everything, mm -hmm. in such a small galley, uh, up here in the overhead, you can see this kind of double panel here. Pull it out. Well, all right, I'll pull it right out. I right, see. Yeah. Pull that out. Now we got some extra surfaces here to set you know, your spices, whatever else. Things that what you're using you're, while you're cooking. Right. Okay. Right. But then when you don't need it, you push it back in. Boom. Gets out of your way. Okay. Right on. Um, anything else in the galley that we should know? What about this fridge? This is not a fridge that's going to use propane. No. This, more of that... Uh, right. This is more about reducing that usage of propane and taking advantage of that lithium ion battery. Uh, this refrigerator is a 12 volt refrigerator, uh, compressor driven. Mm -hmm. It comes out of the marine industry. So again, we're talking about, you know, not parking in level places. This refrigerator works 30 degrees off a level. 
wow. And we're not talking, I mean, yeah, it's a compressor fridge, but it's not like a super power hungry, like something you'd use no. in, a, in a residence, no. right? No, the, these refrigerators just absolutely set power. It's like three, four amps, I think, even when they're running and it's right. only like a 50% duty. So have you got solar or something up top that we can uh, recharge the batteries absolutely. with? Absolutely. We've got uh, two 100 watt panels uh, for uh, up on the roof, so 200 watts total. And the system can be expanded either with uh, a port uh, that's free up on the roof if you want to add a third, third panel mm -hmm. or we'll have a port on the outside of the coach uh, to plug in a portable panel so that's the same zamp system it sounds like that we've got on our travada right it is so it's proven we love ours it works right no issues and we've learned a lot about these compressor refrigerators in our 259k travado and how much solar it takes to keep them yeah, running. two i think you'll be fine with two. Oh, absolutely yeah okay um, so I guess next let's uh, let's have a look at the bathroom and this has been sort of an interesting area here at the outdoor retailer show but let's have a look at the bathroom okay okay so Chris I'm looking at the bathroom and the first thing I see is this cassette toilet what are you thinking here that's right okay little different market here like we've been talking about mm -hmm. the great outdoors we decided to go with the cassette toilet because for, well for starters the tank in a cassette is up above floor in a heated environment oh okay okay so for you know it helps with the four season capability right also where the people are using these uh these coaches pit johns you know and other places for dumping a cassette more readily available pretty convenient yeah and it also allowed us to double the size of our gray water tank ah okay so cassette toilet but the floor is flat straight across right it looks like you're you're thinking of at least leaving the option for a composting toilet it is available i mean if someone wants to take the cassette out having the flat floor as you know makes it much easier to retrofit in a composting toilet okay and the cassette toilet it's like a four and a half gallon tank that's used all over europe right, right. it's a four and a half gallon tank uh, they're used in thousands of motorhomes in europe and that's just the norm, uh, what people use over there. So we're giving it a try here in this market. Uh, see what people think. Okay. Um, now this is a wet bath, right? So there's a shower. Um, and I like the teak floor mat, having built one myself. Right. You know, it is a wet bath, as, as you talked about. We still have our, you know, our toilet paper holder is set in there. We're going for the, the tightest efficiency of design that we can for a coach of this size. But we're thinking that bringing, actually having a bath and bringing that to this fo these folks in this outdoor market, this is something that's really that new. Would, that would be a luxury if you yeah. were used to camping in a tent, right? Right. Compared to the DIY vehicles that people have been putting together, this is something really, really new. And we've seen a lot of solutions here for outdoor showers, like pressurized water or a bag you hang up in a tree or stuff like that. But this is more of a, a luxurious experience, to be a sure. A little more civilized. Yeah. Now. Does it toilet? Does this toilet rotate out of the way? It does. It does, and that's part of the uh, making use of the small space. Uh, you can spin the seat, make give yourself just a little more room at the knees uh, while you're showering. I like it. I like it. All right. So back out of the bathroom and just sort of general thoughts about the about the living space. What what are these What are these cabinets? This is a, it's like is it a laminate? It is. You like that? It's a completely different look from anything else we're building today. All of the cabinet surfaces, you're not going to find a wood grain no. anywhere. Uh, you see we've got the, the laminate on the sides of the cabinets, on the cabinet doors. You are in an accenting color in this case. It's kind of a nice light green. We're doing that because, uh, again, it's the, the type of user that we're targeting. They're going to get the coach dirty. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're going to come in after, you know, right, rock climbing, rock climbing, whatever else. And we want something to be really easy to clean. Right. It, what about the color? Has this been sort of a polarizing thing at the show, or have people generally liked it? People have liked it. You know, not some. You know, it's, uh, response has been really positive. Interesting. Okay, and the the lighting. Um, I'm assuming this is all LED lighting, keeping with the low energy usage. It is. Uh, you can see we've got the racetrack style lighting uh, that we've started using in our View Navion products and our Era products. If you notice how the sh uh, shadows are just about non-existent right and how bright and clear the lighting is in here uh, that's why we're doing it and we'll also have some dimmer switches so that you can have that nice soft light in the evening okay and looking up at the ceiling i'm seeing two fans but not an air conditioner you're not seeing an air conditioner no 
and this is this is an experiment to see how people are going to react. We have two Max fans, mm -hmm. which one in, one out, boom. Yep, one in, one out, and they're going to move a massive amount of air for a coach this size. Mm -hmm. With our electrical system, trying to make and trying to maintain the off-road ability uh, of the coach, we're proposing not having a generator below the floor on this uh. thing, as. You're well aware with uh, ground clearance issues and everything. Mm -hmm. That really matters when you're going over rocks and rough terrain. Mm -hmm. So the air conditioner is such a power hungry uh, mm -hmm. unit. And also by not having one up there, we're opening up more roof space for solar panels, cargo, yeah. and various of, of the uh, accessories that people put on the roof rack. So with no air conditioning, you're, you're trying something that's a little uh, controversial or very different from a traditional RV. We are, and that's the beauty of doing a concept coach is we can float these ideas out there and see what people think. Uh, you know, production-wise, and for sure we would have wiring there for an air conditioner or even offer one as an option. Okay, so like a pre-wire. All right, cool. Okay, Chris, so taking a look at the outside, and I know this is a concept coach, but I'm pretty excited here because I see a bike rack on the back. Mm -hmm. But we can fit two bikes inside so can we can carry four bikes we can carry four bikes <laughs> awesome so but if you don't want to carry the four bikes this removes right that's right you see these four hand nuts mm -hmm. we can just take those out pull the whole bike rack off you know so it's easy to install and uninstall all right and it's a tray rack and and i'm a fan of tray racks because the bikes won't bounce around as much it's not like a, a hitch mount rack or something right, like that right but these trays are something new Okay. Okay. See this hand nut on the bottom? Mm -hmm. We loosen that and you can, you can extend the tray uh, so it's usable for your, the full bike or collapse it so that it stays out of the way when you're closing the door. But you still got the rack in case you need it. Right. Okay. And you can still use the door even with the bikes on? Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Um, have a hitch? It does. Okay. And the next thing I want to talk about is this ladder. This is, I'm pretty excited about this because this is going to make a lot of things on the roof a lot easier. Yes, it is. Okay, so people want to access things at various different places on the roof. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these vans, not real conducive to walking on the roof. No, you'll dead it. Right, and you've got solar panels and air conditioners and everything else up on the roof. Mm -hmm. So this ladder system, again, it's another one of these hand nuts down here. Mm -hmm. Loosen that. And you see how it's hooked up on the rear door? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll just unhook it, and you see the red uh, U-shaped uh, devices there at the top of the ladder? Yeah. Well, let's we'll take it around here to the driver's side of the coach, wherever we want, hook those on the roof rack, and you see where they're the they're bumpers. The, the bumpers rest right on the plastic trim. So you don't have to climb up from the back and then walk along crawls, what I do. But And if you want something on the front of the roof, you don't have to carry a ladder with you. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. All right, Chris, so this is really interesting. I've seen a lot of cool stuff here, but it's just a concept vehicle. Still a concept. So what are your future plans for this bad boy? Well, we put it together to solicit feedback from uh, the attendees here at the Outdoor Retailer Convention. Okay. But, you know, we'd love to hear what your viewers have to say as well. All right, so are you working on some sort of online survey? Or? We're working on an online survey, and we can get you the link for... All right, so we will have a link on thefitrv.com if you'd like to fill out a survey and give your opinions on what you've seen here. Um, Chris, thanks for taking all the time today. Anytime. This is James from The Fit RV and Chris. See you later. Bye. Bye.